Hey everyone, so I'm up in my attic right now. Uh, it's about 20 degrees outside. And a couple years ago we had a hard freeze and we lost power. Uh, some people lost it for, for days. We lost it for, what was it, like 13 or 14 hours and the inside of our house got down to about 50 degrees. Um, I had some portable heaters that I was able to run off a generator and I had a couple propane heaters uh to somewhat keep the temperature uh you know above freezing inside the house and even though our pipes did freeze luckily we did not have any uh busted pipes a lot of people did have busted pipes and i want to make sure that never happens uh again to where if i do lose power i'm able to at least have my central heat working so what i'm going to do this is my switch for my furnace this what turns that basically kills power to the furnace, and I'm going to wire in this switch with a jumper, so that instead of it just instead of this switch having a feed going in, and then whenever you turn it on, the feed comes out and then runs over to the furnace. It's going to run through this jumper, and what that's going to allow me to do is if I do lose power. I'm going to be able to unplug this and plug it, route an extension cord up here and plug an extension cord into this and run my furnace off of either an inverter or a generator. And that's going to supply heat for the entire house. Uh, because the one thing I've found out trying to run little portable heaters is you could get one or two rooms comfortable, but unless you had two or three of those small heaters in each and every room, you're not going to heat an entire house. So, I'm not going to show the wiring of this, but I will point you to a video of a guy that does a very good job showing how to wire this up to do just this. Um, so, whenever I come back, this is going to be wired up, and we're going to give it a shot and see how it works. Alright guys, so it's all wired in. This is what I've got. I've got the switch powering this receptacle. Right now it's turned on. The furnace is plugged in to the outlet. Uh, I've got my transformer down here that goes to the thermostat. And right now, the furnace is all powered up. The thermostat's all powered up. So, under normal conditions, the house is going to heat. Everything's going to be great. If I lose power, and after a few, you know, an hour or two, if power's just not coming on and the house is starting to get cold, all I have to do, turn the switch off to isolate the furnace from the uh, rest of the electrical grid. Unplug this, take an extension cord, plug it into this plug right here. And plug the other end of this extension cord either into an inverter, a generator, or another source of power. And I can at least heat my entire house for virtually, you know, nothing. Um, you know, the, the, my furnace is a gas furnace. So the only thing that's really, uh, that you need power for is, of course, the control board, the thermostat, which I'm about to show you the power down here on it, and the fan. The fan it pulls very, very little current. Uh, so, you know, this is a very low current system, so just a small inverter, uh, or even a, uh, you know, just a small power pack that you can buy now that will supply power to the furnace, uh, you know, that'll even work. So, let me show you some voltage readings here. So I'm going to, I'm going to plug the plug back in. Remember, this isolates the furnace from anything else. So now it's 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 effectively wired up exactly the way it was when this is plugged in and this switch is on. Right now I'm going to leave it off. We'll come down here. Hopefully you can see this meter. I'm going to hit the uh, this transformer. The um, the thermostat operates off of about 19 volts or so. I don't know what exactly, but you can see there on the meter that we virtually have nothing. I'm going to turn the switch on. Now we have 19 volts AC. So 
now the, the, the heater's all functioning the way it should. So again, I'll show you the way this is supposed to work. Normally all this was was an on-off switch to turn the, the uh, furnace off. That's what this switch still does, but I've wired in this pigtail so that I can unplug this and safely plug in an external power source, whether generator, inverter, a power bank, uh, to power my furnace. That way if, if temps get cold and you know the inside of the house starts dropping, I can at least heat my house as long as the natural gas is flowing so anyway that's pretty much all I wanted to show you in this video again I'm going to link to the video of the guy which is a, a, a AC uh, guy that's got a lot of good information on his page and he's the one that inspired me to go ahead and do this and I'm glad he did because I've been trying to figure out an easy way to power my furnace in case temps got uh, cold again and the reason I really got inspired today is because last night a friend of mine who only lives about a block over he lost power and I don't, he, he hasn't I haven't talked to him today but I don't, so I don't know how long he was without power but you know whenever the temperatures uh, are in the you know the single digits it doesn't take long for your internal house temp to really start dropping and that's when your pipes and stuff will start freezing up and literally it'll cost you thousands of dollars if those pipes freeze up and then once they thaw and you've got uh, water spraying in between your walls it, it causes thousands and thousands of dollars worth of damage that's what I'm trying to prevent from my pipes freezing up I want to keep the inside of my house uh, high enough uh, the temperature high enough to where that doesn't happen anyway just a real quick video on an option that you may want to consider on how you can heat your house in an emergency under normal conditions this is this is the way you leave it and what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually put a piece of tape on this with simple instructions on what this is all about because when we sell this house the next homeowner may not understand what this is all about and uh, he may end up he or she may end up thinking me years down the road for doing this now whenever we had uh, our power outage a couple years ago these were what I used to power the little uh, I had uh, three electric heaters they were 1500 watts each um, and we also powered uh, a TV and we kept our refrigerator plugged in also and a couple uh, lamps so we would have light and I've got two of these generators I didn't actually use this one this one's still brand new in the box this one's still new but we used it whenever we needed the power uh, a couple years ago when we lost it for th I think 13 hours but if you don't want to buy a generator let me show you the next best thing and depending on your situation this is probably the way to go and what's nice about this option is you don't have to worry about putting gas in it or uh, hoping that it'll start up and that's just inverters and the way an inverter works is this one I bought years ago and we've used it uh, you just connect these to your battery of your vehicle you let your vehicle run so that you don't deplete the battery and then you just plug in your your devices and either one of these the, uh, the furnace only pulls about 750 watts of electricity this one here is a thousand watt continuous 2000 watt peak now, 1,000 watt continuous, whenever you see the continuous, like this is a 2,000 watt continuous, 4,000 watt peak, the continuous is how much it will con continue to provide continuously. The peak is momentary. So like whenever a motor kicks on, it'll draw a lot more electricity for a second or two before it gets wound up and it's spinning at its uh, recommended speed. And then it'll drop down on how much current it's using. So a furnace uses about 750 watts, so even this little small inverter should power that uh, furnace no problem. This is a little bigger unit. This would, uh, would not only power it, but you could plug in the refrigerator and keep your stuff uh, from going bad uh, also. 
the nice thing about this is I keep this in the box if I need it I just pull it out connect it and I'm good to go I don't have to worry about putting gas in it don't have to worry about any of that as long as you've got a vehicle that runs that you can leave idling uh, you know in a, a vehicle especially a little four-cylinder something you know you could leave that idling for for who knows how long probably a couple days I imagine but uh, anyway the inverter option or the generator option to power your furnace during a power outage uh, in the in the winter time that way you keep your entire house warm anyway that's it you guys take care we'll see you in the next one